Hey everyone, you get a trifecta today of prepping. We're going to talk about growing potatoes. We're going to talk about uh, my battery system. I've been uh, charging them up and you know what I've run through and uh, what my final step that I'm going through. And uh, then we're also going to talk about uh, preserving some jalapenos uh, because my half gallon jar emptied out today and I uh, was making my nachos and it had just enough it was almost a disaster but guess what I grew a bunch of jalapenos plants this year and I went and picked a bunch today and I uh, show the process of how you uh, fill that jar back up and that jar will last me probably six months so I'm probably gonna have a whole bunch more that I'll have to put in quart size jars as well but that first and foremost was fill in my kitchen jar so I can use it now let's start with uh, potatoes I've been talking about this off and on a little bit but I think I finally have the whole process here and uh, I think I even discovered one of the subscribers problems that uh, he had this year where he ended up with just really small potatoes and during my research I figured out maybe why that happened so uh, there's tricks to the trade for everything here and uh, I'm going to show you what I think is uh, the best of the internet that I found and uh, in fact you know we've had such cool weather this last uh, uh, week in fact you know I thought it was just gonna be the first couple days but the whole week has been cool and I mean dry it's, it's uh, like spring or fall it's unbelievable here and so uh, I'm getting my potatoes ready I wasn't planning on starting for a couple more weeks but I'm gonna go ahead and get mine started so the first step is called chitting, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, not the other word, chitting. And this is the process of forcing the potatoes to sprout. And this just saves you some time. So for instance, uh, in the northern climates, uh, you know, if you were to just kind of, and you could just put seed potatoes in the ground and, and you know, just cut them in pieces, but this is a process for kind of speeding things up. You can get started uh, several weeks earlier. It's almost like starting some of your plants in the basement and everything, you do this. And uh, what you do is you get yourself a, uh, they talk about egg cartons. You can use egg cartons. I just took some of my mason jar boxes that I had that are fairly shallow and uh, lined my potatoes up in there. And normally you're supposed to kind of stand them up on end, but I don't know where they're gonna sprout. So I just kind of laid them in there. And then what I'll do is as they start sprouting, I'll uh, you know go the egg carton route or I'll put newspapers between them to kind of you know stand them up that kind of thing but um, I have a spot in my basement that's relatively cool it's not 50 degrees like they suggest uh, but it's uh, maybe 70 down there and I've got uh, LED grow lights and so I just set uh, two of these uh, mason jar boxes filled with potatoes and I'm gonna grow a bunch of potatoes this time because I got that hill back there that uh, you know I'm preparing and I'm just gonna load that thing up but anyways um, that's the first thing you do just go ahead and uh, get them started and uh, now potatoes need anywhere from 90 to let's say 120 days before a freeze and I'll say there's different types of potatoes right but I kinda just use a little red potatoes because um, if some of them don't grow to full size we still eat them because we love the little red potatoes they're great for like breakfast you just kind of fry them up or you know you boil them up with your steaks and stuff and with onions and mushrooms and uh, um, so I'm not trying to grow the big Idaho potatoes or russets or anything like that I'm I just do the red potatoes because there's no um, uh, not trying to get perfection I like large medium small potatoes in the reds and they're perfectly fine so that's something for you to think about if you're just starting out you might want to try the red potatoes then there's sweet potatoes now on the hill I'm growing a whole bunch of sweet potatoes who knows this is uh, the second year I've tried it last year I did not get them out of the ground in time and they turned to mush so I'm going to be on top of it this time but uh, sweet potatoes are not as hardy as red potatoes red potatoes uh, I actually had, had uh, you know, dug the beds out for the red potatoes and uh, we obviously missed some and they started growing in the spring. So um, very hardy compared to the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, when they're done, get them out. 
All right, let's see. So uh, there's a lot of debate about chitting, but in this one place he says it works better and we get a slightly higher harvest. So um, I've, whenever I bought seed potatoes from like Tractor Supply, they were already uh, sprouting and so I would just cut off, uh, cut the potatoes, because a lot of them were fairly large potatoes and I'd cut them into five or six pieces and I uh, would, sometimes I would just throw them in the ground like that, other times I would let them out leave them out on uh, like uh, my grill or something and let them kind of scab over a little bit but tell you the truth I didn't see a difference so maybe it depends on your soil maybe it depends on whether you have you know bugs or something but uh, um, that's one of the things that you can do um, now this is the potential cause of and I, I'm sorry I can't remember who it was that had the issue but uh, uh, they claimed that all they had was really small potatoes and right here it says uh, if you want to maximize the size of your potatoes, rub off all but three or four at the top end of the tuber before planting out. If you leave all the shoots intact, you'll end up with lots of small potatoes. It's up to you to decide. And uh, so that's something to think about. Again, I didn't know that, but uh, you know the way I cut up my potatoes, I didn't have that many uh, uh, shoots coming off each one. But this year, I'm tending to plant whole potatoes, just their small ones, about... I don't know. Probably the biggest one is the size of a ping pong ball or something. All right, another thing that you need to consider. A garden bed used for potatoes one year should not be used the following year for another crop of potatoes. Um, one problem with growing potatoes the same bed year after year is potatoes are heavy feed or growing another crop of potatoes the previous year's bed depletes the soil nutrients leading to low yields and reliance on fertilizer. But you know, if you're using fertilizer, you probably can get away with it. But the idea is they talk about the fact that, uh, you know, we've had problems in certain countries. I think it was Ireland ended up with an issue. But if you go back and look, they were primarily growing one type of potato throughout the whole land. And so when it uh, ended up having a blight, then the whole country was screwed. So think about that. Um, and you know that's kind of a problem because I'm reusing some of my potatoes that were left over this year and so I'm kind of doing one type of potato right now but maybe I will switch to a different uh, brand next year and uh, that way I'll get a type of rotation but it talks about uh, let's see there was a little rule of thumb here so remember this rhyme for alternating crops in your gardens you know beans and then you go to roots and there's a reason for this beans uh, uh, put a lot of nitrogen in the soil and uh, it makes you wonder because on uh, like potatoes they want low nitrogen we'll talk about later but anyways you follow this plan you plant beans one year and then you do roots the next and it talks about in a minute uh, what all the different root crops are but potatoes are one of them then you go into greens and then you go into fruits so it says beans include peas and green beans that add nitrogen to soil. Roots include potatoes, turnips, and beets. Greens can be any crop harvested for its leaves, ranging from cabbages to lettuce. Fruits include tomatoes, peppers, squash, cucumbers, and corn. Keep crops in this rotation helps to reduce nutrient depletion uh, soil and reduces the chance of pests and disease running rampant. So after your potatoes, set that garden bed aside for something leafy. All right, so that means that the bed that I use this year for potatoes, I'm going to have to put my, uh, like, spinach and uh, whatever else, because uh, beets are going to be in the root crop. So, anyways, you got to make a plan out, and that's probably what I'll do. I'll have a little spreadsheet. I like doing spreadsheets, and so I'll say, okay, here's what I did last year, here's what I did this year, and, and here's what I'm going to do for the fall, that kind of thing. Now, fertilizer. Choose a fertilizer with potassium and phosphate levels that are higher than nitrogen levels. So, for instance, uh, you know, everybody likes 10 10 10. That's like a, a common fertilizer you use in your garden. But potatoes like 5 10 10, or I think I read in here later, or maybe it was another thing I was reading. Somebody was, was saying use a 10 20 20. So, you know, I may end up having to buy these individual. Um, Containers so I can mix it as I need because it's a pain in the butt. I end up with four or five different bags of fertilizer So maybe I'll just buy you know a really high nitrogen bag and then I'll buy a really high phosph 
phosphate bad and real high potassium and then I'll mix it as I need it all right let's see yeah so here it is uh, choose an all-purpose granular fertilizer with appropriate levels of potassium and phosphate using 5 10 10 or 8 24 24 it's kind of weird there's such a big difference between those two scatter the granules on the ground around the plants and water them in but you know if you're preparing your bed you want to go ahead and put this stuff in the bed and then rototill it in or turn it in or something and so that your your bed is uh, set up now yeah here it is it talks about uh, one and a half pounds per hundred square feet so mine are uh, four by eight so 32 so that tells me how much 32 square feet each of my beds so that tells me how much fertilizer to put in now just to kind of jump through this a little bit is that um, you need to take a uh, dig a furrow um, so like in my four by eight beds I'll make three furrows I'll put one about four inches in, in from one side and I'll dig down about uh, you know ten inches and then I will put some fertilizer in the bottom of the bed it needs to be like four inches wide too and then I'll put a little dirt over that and then I'll set my seed potato in and then I will put some of the dirt back on top of only about three inches on top of the potato and to leave the rest of the hole uncovered and then what I'll do is just keep going all the way down the line and then I'll go down the middle row and then I'll go down the uh, other end row and I'll put the seed potatoes in and they need to be you could say 12 to 15 inches apart your little seed potatoes so that uh, and then what happens is after they start sprouting the uh, the plants will get up let's say four or five inches above the uh, um, the dirt that you have just go ahead and fill it back in and mound it up around the plant and uh, that would be the time that you want to go ahead and add some more fertilizer too so that uh, these are heavy feeders and that's one of the things I didn't do last time but um, you need to every four weeks add more fertilizer and then the last two weeks you don't add fertilizer because you you won't it's it's going to be just dying back anyways so think about it, it's going to be three you'll have to fertilize uh, three times and then because uh, it's uh, going to be 110 days is typically what it is so that so you got 90 days that you'll be fertilizing once every 30 days so you fertilize once when you put it in the ground and then you fertilize so, so you have to set up a calendar to get the highest yield all right let's see what else we got all right so I did find this thing that talks about the different fertilizers so you know a lot of times when I refresh my beds I'm using cow manure it's composted it's black cow but I got rabbit manure too and I wanted to see where that fits in here and this has a higher nitrogen so I've been told you can't really use that for blueberries but I'm it looks like it would work good for the for the potatoes because uh, it's got just a little more nitrogen so again if I'm mixing my own nitrogen I can back off and use this but anyways this is something to keep keep an eye on depending on what uh, fertilizer you have some things like chicken and cow manure you cannot use right away you have to compost it because they consider hot and cold manure all right let's go to the next thing all right I'm down in my basement and I'm taking my leftover potatoes that I had uh, from my garden this year and uh, this is the end of July <clears throat> we've actually had a lot cooler weather and I thought man I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my potatoes chitting and this is the process of where you put it under bright lights and a lot of times you put it like by a kitchen window or something and you just get the sun on it but I actually have a bunch of LED lights in my basement for uh, growing starting my plants early in the spring and I thought this would be a perfect spot so I've kind of just spread them out and as I was going through them kind of inspecting them I found that I had a couple that were already sprouting eh, I can't find them now but uh, anyways the idea is just get them under some bright lights and then what I'm going to do over the next few days is go ahead and get my beds all prepared. Now the best time in Georgia is to do potatoes in the spring. You start it uh, um, and as early as you can like early March or something and you'll have the best luck but uh, I'm going to try a fall crop this year and uh, I had good luck last year. 
I called around and I couldn't get any seed potatoes. Nobody's stocking them. And maybe it's just because it's early still, but I got a feeling we're going to have an early winter. So I'm going to go ahead and get mine uh, uh, chitted and then uh, planted. And then we'll just watch and see what happens. But um, this is a good amount. I'm, I'm going to plant a crap load of potatoes and we'll see how it turns out. But uh, I want to see if I can keep improving. Let me tell you something about my batteries. So I went through each of the batteries and I charged them all up and they all seem to be very good. Now, I used my regular uh, battery charger for like the car, but I think now I'm going to go ahead and take my Minn Kota dual battery charger and put it on and uh, uh, let it go through the multiple stages of charging and let it uh, finish each one of these batteries. So I've got to go in and, and get that set up, but uh, that's ultimately the way to... Uh, to charge these things is just leave it on let it go through because it it's like a 24-hour process so i did about uh, 12 to 14 hours with that and got it up uh, pretty doggone close but i want to get them all stabilized and then what i'll do is i'll check all the voltages once i've gone through that process and uh, mark it on the battery and then we'll try to pair up the battery so we have an equal uh, kind of like the uh each string will have a comparable strength. You don't want it like a weak battery and a strong string and vice versa. So we're going to try to equalize each one of these uh, five strings. Anyways, uh, and then I've got another battery pack that apparently is available. So I'm going to see if I can't get that picked up and put in here. And I'll be like super overkill. But, uh, you know, I figure my house is going to be like a base of operations for my family. And so... I'll have family coming from across the country and and uh, we should have enough resources uh, to like keep some refrigerators going and uh, min minimal lights and maybe a microwave occasionally that kind of thing. All right, so let me uh let me get to working on hooking up my battery charger. All right, here's a I really like these chargers. Uh I I bought these for years and uh, they work great for uh like my um AGM batteries I use in my boat and uh, so these uh, I assume are going to work fantastic for it's a dual channel and so you can see channel 2 is flashing channel 1 is not and I'll show you in a second what that means but uh, what it's doing is uh, it'll move through three different uh, charging um, approaches I guess we could say they're both of them are flashing now so they're in the charge mode so let me show you So what happens is, uh, let's say when I first got these batteries, they were like about 12 and a half volts. Uh, this would have stayed on the yellow, full yellow for a long time because it would have been in the bulk charging. So it would have been hitting it pretty hard with pretty high current. And then what happens is you go through this absorption stage, which the voltage starts uh, trailing off. And that's where we're at because I already gave these all a uh, kind of a top off but what I'm trying to do is just make sure that they're completely charged all exactly the same level so they're gonna go through this period of time probably not for very long and then we're gonna go through this uh, very low level you can see how this uh, voltage uh, slowly ramps down to exactly what it needs to be for an AGM so I'm gonna do 24 hours for each of these but I can do two at a time in fact, I've got two of these chargers. I could hook it up and go through, but I'm, I'm just not in that much of a hurry. So you can see each one of these are set up. So I've got one and two set up and, uh, and we'll see how long it takes before it goes through to the uh, final full charge and, and completion. But like I said, I'll probably tomorrow morning come down, switch it over to the next pair of batteries. And, uh, that way I'll know exactly what they are. And then what I'll do is, uh, um, after they've cooled off, I'll come down and make a measurement of all the batteries like I talked about before uh, using my multimeter and then we'll try to pair them up if they're substantially different. If they're not, we'll leave them alone. But uh, right now, we'll just go through the process. So like I said, I went through and topped up all of these. They all had about a 24-hour charge with my regular uh, car battery charger, but it was actually, it, it can t uh, charge any kind of battery. So I set it for AGM, which is what these are, advanced glass mat, sealed batteries, lead acid, and uh, 
we'll see what happens. But I, I may go ahead and get my other charger up here just to speed things up. This is a lot of batteries. So you think about it, it'll be another 24. No, actually, I'm doing two at a time, so it doesn't take that long. So two days for each one of these, so that would be uh, 10 days total. So less than two weeks, I'll have these completely topped off, and then I'll know what I've got. But anyways, I'm pretty happy. I'm sure hoping that the other uh, batteries are as good a shape as these are. And these are really big batteries. Let me just see if I can show you. I mean, those things are two feet long. Can you see that? That goes from front to back. I thought at first when I was looking at the picture that there were two batteries and you know, back to back here, but that's one big battery. So maybe it's better to show it this way. I can back up a little bit. Yeah, that's one battery length here. So we've got four on each shelf and then there's five shelves. It's a fantastic battery. All right. Well, we'll just wait and see how long this takes to get through the whole topping process. But uh, so I got to wait according to this when it's in the uh, flashing green LED, that's when it's uh, going through the, uh, the maintenance charge. And then when it's green LED, that tells me it's completely done. So I'm just going to wait for it to get from yellow to green, uh, flashing green, and then to green. And then I'll move it over to the next two batteries. Okay. I got to get back upstairs. So I got some work today. <clears throat> I got a whole bunch of jalapenos that are starting to come off the uh, plants. And I've even got this uh, small pepper. I don't know what these are. I bought a, you know, just unusual different to plant this time and I took a bite and these are, uh, these are pretty spicy. These remind me of the uh, peppers that are in the restaurants in those little glass jars with vinegar and you can use that for like flavoring your meal. But uh, anyways, I'm going to throw them in the jar, chop them up a little bit and throw them in here because uh, I love putting jalapenos on nachos with some cheese and stuff. But in any event, this jar I have been using for years. And uh, this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and do the boiling canner thing, even just to, uh, uh, because I'm replacing all the vinegar and everything this time, and I want to give it the best chance of being, uh, um, I guess, as sanitary as possible. But uh, vinegar is pretty good about killing everything. But we use, or I, maybe I'm the one, I use all the jalapenos. I eat the crap out of these things. I love them. And so... This just allows me to uh, preserve them, and I should uh, be able to pretty much fill this jar up. That's a that's quite a few jalapenos, and I got more out there on the bush I can pull off if I need to, but I need to get this jar filled up and uh, make use because, unfortunately, they don't last forever when you pull them off the vine. <coughs> By the way, a little secret about jalapenos. If you let them uh, stay on there and change colors and get some of this... Uh, uh, little lines on them they usually get a, a quite a bit spicier than if you just pull them off and you'll notice some of these are the lighter green versus the darker green so these are all varying degrees of of heat but when you put them in the jar they're kind of kind of go co-mingle the other thing i've got to do is i got a whole bunch of green beans i got to snap today and so that's probably Geez, I don't know how much this is going to be. That's probably going to be a full case of quart-sized jars, so 12 quart-sized jars. That's a lot. And I still, uh, I picked a lot of these this morning, and I need to go back out in the afternoon, and I usually find more that I missed. So, anyways, this is uh, what I'm going to be working on now. Secret with uh, jalapenos. Wear gloves. Occasionally, I think I can do it without the gloves, and I'm always sorry that I did. Um... If you have any cuts on your hands, it'll burn like crazy and you'll tend to scratch near your eye or something. You'll be sorry you did. And uh, just any real tender spot around your nose, you'll notice it. It'll burn like the Dickens. So wear gloves. So I usually get these. Uh, just any kind of gloves will protect you from it. And uh, throw those suckers away. Don't reuse them because there's this oil gets in there and it's it's tough. And these are not super hot peppers, but... Your body is sensitive to uh, pepper, so anyways, uh, I'm going to get working. Okay, well that actually worked pretty good. I got uh, most of the jar filled up. I'm not even really going to add any more to this because I want to have a little bit of head space at the top. So now I just got to go look up the recipe, but uh, it's usually like uh, 
two thirds of vinegar and then one third water, but I'm probably going to add a little bit of uh, garlic in here as well, just for a little flavor. But anyways, that's uh, looking really good. Okay, my finished product. I put uh, two tablespoons of uh, mustard seed. I put uh, one head of garlic that I just uh, basically peeled and chopped up and put in there. It's garlic that I grew. And uh, I took uh, three cups of uh, pickling vinegar. It's like 5%. And then I used three cups of water. And then I took one of these... Uh, I don't know what you call these things, but I filled it with the pickling spice and I stuck it in the vinegar and water and boiled it for a little bit so it could pick up some of that flavor. And then I just poured it over the jalapenos and cleaned the lid really good and sealed it up. And that's a half a gallon of jalapenos, so that's fantastic. And I went out in the garden and I found more jalapenos. So I had more in case I needed to. I got a bunch of uh, okra that I got to go pick and uh, we got to get that canned or we got to cook it. And I'm going to try to talk the wife into this weekend to fry me up some okra because I'm telling you that is one of my favorites. And she does it gluten free so maybe I'll, that'll be a good video. I can show the recipe of how to do that. All right. Well, let me go splice this together. I, I got to do green beans. I hate doing it. It's a pain in the butt, but I got to do it. They're uh, they're on the list. All right, let me uh, let me go put this in a video. Hey, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.